On this Friday show, the nicest dirt track in America that you don't know about, sprint car teams doing reconnaissance work at Texas Motor Speedway, updates on Timez and Ryan Robinson, and much more. Let's go. It's Thursday, April 4th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. Uh, attention all lawn and garden enthusiasts. Did you know that April is Lawn and Garden Month? You can celebrate Lawn and Garden Month with Kubota's high-performance blades, specially cra uh, crafted to elevate your mowing game to superhero status. Whether you're taming wild lawns or sculpting immaculate gardens, Kubota Genuine Blades are your trusty sidekick for a precision cut finish that's second to none. Embrace the spirit of growth and beautification this month with Kubota because when it comes to your lawn and garden, only the best will do. To get a set of Kubota Genuine Mower Blades, visit your local Kubota dealer. If you need to find a dealer, you can look them up in the My Kubota app or visit KubotaUSA.com. We've got a packed show today, lots to get into, including several news items and a bunch of schedule stuff to know about for not only this weekend, but the coming weeks as well. We'll start first with the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series weekend ahead. Trouble last Saturday night for Gio Selzy saw him drop from a tie for the lead in the championship with David Gravel down to third behind Gravel and Donnie Schatz. It was Gio's first finish outside the top 10 this season and kind of a wild series of events that saw him crash out of that one. These guys will continue to be in the thick of this fight, though. This is a bump in the road. As for shots, he's now the only driver left with a top 10 finish in every race. This is Donnie's best start to an outlaw season since he went 11 straight top 10s to start the year in 2020. I also continue to be impressed by the speed we've seen from Landon Crawley. I know he doesn't have the feature finishes to show for it, and this season is going to be a big learning year for him. We already know that. He's 16 years old. But this kid is fast, and being fast is not easy to teach. At the moment, Crawley has the fifth best qualifying average of the full-time outlaw drivers, and Sheldon Hodenshield and Buddy Kofoid are just a tenth of a position better in that stat. Those are two really fast guys to be in the same neighborhood with. Sheldon has won the past two trips to US 36 Raceway, where the Outlaws will be Friday, and then Arrowhead Speedway in Oklahoma will make its first appearance ever on the Outlaw schedule come Saturday. This is going to be the sixth running of the Jason Johnson Classic. Arrowhead used to be Flint Creek Speedway, but the entire facility is brand new as of 2023. They opened Memorial Day last year, and this place just might be the nicest dirt track in America that you don't know about. I had a driver whose opinion I very much respect just this week tell me, quote, Arrowhead is by far the nicest thing out there right now. One third mile racetrack, grandstands with seat backs. They've got suites on both the front stretch and the back stretch. They've got a paved pit area, new LED lighting, and pristine restrooms. The owners, Willie and Elizabeth Gamble, have invested a significant amount of time and money into this place the last few years, and it looks incredible. We don't get enough good news and positivity about racetracks these days, so I wanted to spotlight this on the show. The track sits about 80 miles straight east of Tulsa on Highway 412. If you are nearby, I would definitely recommend getting there on Saturday. The Extreme Outlaw Midgets will join the World of Outlaws Friday at US 36 and also race Saturday at Sweet Springs. Cannon McIntosh is your championship leader there after two races. Another sprint car event to keep an eye on this weekend is the Power I-410 races at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. Remember, this was originally an ASCS event, but it got flipped after the World Racing Group deal. These uh, races becoming 410 nights adds an extra wrinkle and kind of a different group of cars, especially with High Limit going to TMS the following weekend on April 13th. The TMS dirt track doesn't get used a ton, and the field this weekend will include some guys coming in very much to gather information ahead of that High Limit race. At the moment, that includes High Limit full-timers Brent Marks, Chris Windham, and Brenham Crouch. I was told that the, tr uh, that the work on the track surface has been ongoing the last few weeks in order to get it ready for these upcoming races. Some other names expected include Sam Hafer, Teep Jr., and past outlaw full-timer Noah Gass. Remember, too, High Limit ends its season with two nights at TMS in October, so if the championship battle is tight, information gathered now could come in big later on this season. Elsewhere in Sprint Car Racing, we've lost Friday's show uh, at Attica. The IRA opening weekend at 34 Raceway is off, and the Fast Show at Atomic, uh, all of those are gone because of weather. Make sure to look at websites and social media before heading to the racetrack this weekend. The NARC Sprint Cars are at Stockton on Saturday with the Sprint Car Challenge Tour. Cole Macedo won the NARC opener a few weeks ago, and the Terre Haute USAC uh, Sprint Car Show is rained out. Uh, that was Friday, but Saturday, Red Hill still on his schedule. Uh, that show at Red Hill is the salute to Levi Jones. It is $10,000 to win. 
Uh, jumping back to High Limit, it was just like a week ago that they moved the Kokomo date from May 14th to May 13th. Uh, this took it out of a direct conflict with action at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which kicks off Indy 500 festivities. There was criticism out there that it was now scheduled on top of the Flow Racing Night in America show at Brownstown, but that's now been adjusted. In a release yesterday talking about Kubota as the series presenting sponsor, it was revealed that that Flow Racing Night in America series show at Brownstown will now be run Tuesday, May 14th, which now moves it out of that conflict with High Limit. The series has also shifted the May uh, or the Macon show from May 29th to Tuesday, May 28th. Uh, so if you're in that area, uh, you know, right that early week there of the Indian Indianapolis 500 stuff, you can attend both of these races, High Limit Monday and Brownstown on Tuesday. In some driver news, Thomas Meserol will miss a few weeks of racing as he heals up from a broken collarbone following an incident during the No Way Out 40 at Paragon. He shared uh, onboard footage of the crash on his YouTube channel this week. Team has also said he had a ride lined up to run some World of Outlaws races coming up in the next month, but he is hopeful that the deal could still happen. I was a bit surprised to learn that Timez has never made a start against the Outlaws in his career. He's made plenty of local wing starts and with series like Fast and the All-Stars, but no Outlaw appearances. That, that, was, that was a little bit surprising to me. Also, PJ Peterson shared yesterday that California sprint car driver Ryan Robinson is stepping away from racing after that nasty crash he had at Chico a few weeks ago during the NARC season opener. He was leading that race late and went for a wild ride down the backstretch. I'm sure you might remember some of the uh, the highlights floating around uh, between Cali Dirt video and float racing of that crash. He pointed towards aggravating a previous injury and mentioned being susceptible to concussions and vision issues. His sister Jody Robinson will take over the 14W ride he was scheduled to drive this season. A weekend late model racing uh, coming up includes the Spring Nationals at Buckshot and East Alabama. Brandon Overton has taken over the Spring Nationals championship lead after last weekend's races at I-75 and Taswell. The MLRA at Tri-City is rained out and the XR Super Series opener at Volunteer has seen a schedule change. The Friday program is being pushed to Sunday, so now we'll have a 30,000 win race on Saturday and a 12,000 to win show on Sunday. Earlier start times are also in place with grandstands opening at 3 and racing at 5. And finally, the USMTS Modifieds are racing this weekend as well, taking on the rescheduled King of America at Humboldt Speedway in Kansas. 3,000 to win tonight, 5,000 to win Friday, and 12,000 to win on Saturday. Dan Ebert holds a very slight four-point lead right now over Jake Tim in the standings. Uh, that is just uh, with just four races complete. All right, that's it for the Daily Show this week. If you still want a new Dirt Tracker t-shirt, you got to move quickly as sizes are becoming limited over at shop.dirttracker.com. I sold the last 2X yesterday, but larges and XLs are still available. You can grab a sticker while you are there as well. If you want to see your weekend streaming options, make sure to hit up dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. I hope you guys have a great Thursday out there. We'll see you right back here on Sunday.